Hey, it's Brian Mudd. This is the video cheat sheet for Tuesday, August the 9th. All right, yesterday, might have tried your every last nerve. What's been going on here for the past couple of weeks in the stock market is certainly causing systemic amounts of fear throughout pretty much every corner of this country. In fact, it doesn't stop at our borders. It's going around the world. Now, Europe has its own problems. Now, keep in mind that one of the things that I try to do is keep you ahead of the curve. That's why weeks ago, I was saying that unfortunately, I think we're already headed towards a double dip recession if we weren't already there. However, all the distraction from the debt ceiling argument, which is very real, don't get me wrong, that's a very real problem, but that provided a distraction from what was going on in the economy, which was an already very weak recovery, was actually heading back the other way. And as soon as that debt deal got signed, why then people started to figure out just how rough the economy actually is. All right? So that's why I was telling you that you need to brace yourself for what might be coming with a double dip recession. Now you're starting to hear that out there in a very big way. It's rippling through the entire economy. And there is a great deal of pain being felt in the stock market, not just here in the United States, but around the world. I've mentioned that this is not the fall of 2008, not here in the United States, and it's not, by the way, but it is for Europe. That entire European cr uh, crisis, it's very real. It is their version of what we are going through in 2008. Now, the problem we've got is obviously our economy never really got going all that well. Now our economy is back into decline, so you have companies that are being sold off in mass one because more and more people are going oh my god we are heading into a double dip recession number two there's an absolute crisis of confidence in our federal government there's zero leadership from the president is no new ideas in fact yesterday when he came out and was speaking in the middle of the sell-off the market ended up selling off another 300 points after he got done why because there's nothing new there there's no leadership you know, some people are talking about the Federal Reserve meeting that's coming up today. They can't do anything else. See, we've already tried the stimulus. We've already tried printing money in the form of QE1 and QE2. That's the printing of money and buying our own debt with it. It doesn't work. And worst of all, it's inflationary. That's why, uh, the biggest reason why commodity prices were rising so much. Now, the good news is the last round of that stopped at the end of June. And what's happened since then? Why commodity prices have actually been coming down which takes me back to a phrase I coined in 2008. The good thing about a, a bad economy is that stuff gets cheaper. That's what we, the one thing here right now that we can hang our hats on. Stuff is getting cheaper. The price of oil real time as I'm recording this is now down to about $78 per barrel. That is a significant decline. We've seen $99 a barrel just within the last month. And when I extrapolate how much gas could come down as a result of what we've seen in oil and thus the wholesale uh, gasoline refined market, it looks like about 60 cents a barrel if we can sustain these, or a gallon rather, at the pump, if we sustain these prices. So if you could see 60 cents a gallon come off at the pump, guess what? Well, that's going to put more money in your pocket at all times. And it will also mean that a lot of the items that became more expensive at the grocery store, a lot of other commodities that require energy, they all do, right, to grow, to uh, harvest, to get to market, produce and everything, uh, they will get cheaper as well. And that is the one thing that can help us, and might be, if somehow or another we do avoid a double dip recession here, uh, that might be the one silver lining that we've actually got. So, mortgage rates. Uh, one of the things I was talking about going back a couple weeks ago is that because we don't know what's going to happen, and we likely would end up facing a downgrade, and I mentioned it would probably be S&P, and sure enough, that, that turned out to be, uh, the, interest, the, the, the interest rates and the credit scenario plays out nationally. It's the same deal with our consumer credit. We have the three consumer credit rating agencies. They have the three uh, sovereign and corporate rating agencies. They work in a similar fashion, which is most lenders will actually drop your lowest credit score, drop your highest credit score, and take a look at the one in the middle. So as long as you only have one that doesn't view you as positively as the others, you can usually overcome that. And such is the case here in the United States. We can probably overcome the one. But keep in mind, everybody has us on credit watch negative. So if you're going to make a big purchase, I'm talking about a car or a house, I want you to get rate locked right now. We've actually seen mortgage rates and interest rates decline 
over the past week even further because people don't know where to put their money. They're pulling it out of the stock market. They're actually putting it back into treasuries. So the irony is, as the United States credit is downgraded and people are saying, hey, it has more risk attached to it, people are actually putting more money into there because they're scared of putting it anywhere else. At least this set of gold, which is hitting another series of new highs, $1,755 now. It's real time as I'm recording this. The bottom line here is, if you have, and this gets back to what I've been saying, if you need money that's in the stock market for short-term use, then you need to be on the sidelines right now because we don't know where this ends and we don't know the irrational behavior that can cause sell-offs. There are some great companies. The great companies right now, they're a good value. They were, there will be tomorrow and a year from now. But it doesn't matter if everybody just wants out. So if you need money short-term, that's where you got to be smart. If you're in it for the long-term, be in great companies, more cash than debt, growing top-line year-over-year, paying a great dividend, you'll probably be okay. But you've got to protect yourself right now. That's my cheat sheet today. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Hang tough. We'll see you.